All right, everybody, it's time for your favorite podcast. This is Survival of the Fittest. This is the Soup du Jour. I'm Roberto Trevino, and do I have a show for you today? Well, can we be more Survival of the Fittest is the Soup du Jour than Hurricane Ian? Now, I'm not trying to make light. I know a lot of people had some serious stuff go down because of this, so... You know, we're praying for everybody. And certainly, you know, you know, we're we're used to it. In Puerto Rico, we've get we get big storms. You know, obviously Maria, it, you know, was another level. But Florida is not used to getting direct hits like this, and it was rough, you know. And so once again, we really send out a lot of great vibes to all our friends down in uh you know, down on the west coasts of Florida. So, you know, Fort Myers, uh, Port, Port Charlotte, you know, we r- really got a lot of good vibes going to you folks. And, uh, you know, the prayers are limitless. I mean, we are nonstop trying to make this, you know, I can't say better because it's just really tragic. But, um, you know, we um, here in Orlando, we did you know, get hit hard. And, uh, you know, there's so many road closures and flooding and, you know, just things just aren't the same, you know. And uh, even though we're, you know, got to thank our lucky stars for the most part, it still has to set forth the possibilities of it having massive effect on the restaurant business. And what do I mean by that? Certainly not because people aren't out there, selling food and people aren't working no people are working and food is getting sold but here is what my concern is post pandemic the labor force has been very difficult and i'm starting to feel like post ian it might get even harder to put people in your kitchens um you know, in front of the house, people like to make money, and they, they're usually pretty good about that. And, um, you know, the front of the house is the front of the house. The back of the house is a little different skill set, and it requires you to find people who know what the F they're doing. <laughs> I didn't want to cuss, but uh, we're having a hard time with that. And as a restaurant consultant, as a chef, I've noticed it getting just harder and harder to find the proper skill set and just have the people. Now, now, if you're willing to pay top dollar, you'll probably find people. But restaurants in general and restaurateurs in general don't have all the money in the world to be able to pay top dollar to everybody in your kitchen. And everybody in the kitchen lately wants to get paid top dollar. It's not doable. It's, it's, it's unrealistic and fanciful for, you know, uh, people to believe that they're, they can make that big bucks, you know, those big bucks in the kitchen, you know. There was a time when, uh, you know, when the restaurants were killing it and you had to pay the chef good money. You had to pay your cooks good money. And now it's just not the same. Like, I, I'm working with some restaurants right now that really don't have, their bottom line just cannot cover their expenses like employees want to get paid. And a lot of restaurateurs are kind of backed up into a corner. And, uh, you know, the guest, obviously the guest should never feel, you know, the, the troubles that the restaurant is having. You know, they should never feel the effects of, you know, hard times, and they d- expect to just, you know, order their food and get it done properly, done right, and uh, depending on the restaurant, you know, the expectations go with at par, you know, with what the restaurant sells, and uh, I, what I'm starting to notice is um, you just doesn't, just don't have the staff to do it, you know, the staff is just not there to provide that quality and or have the knowledge to push those the limit you know uh, or push the quality push themselves to give you what you're looking for as as an owner and ultimately as the guest 
You know, so here's our problem. Can we find the chefs required to give you the quality you want to give your guest, how you sell your restaurant, you know, or how, and I literally mean by how you advertise what you provide your guest, you know, that's what I mean by sell your restaurant. You know, will you have the proper staff to execute properly what your guest expectations will be? And ultimately, my my honest belief is we're getting to the point where I'd have to say no. You know, we're getting to the point where, you know, you're kind of just putting like, and I remember restaurateurs would tell me, you know, as a chef, I would always fight this, you know, oh, we just need bodies. We just need hands in the kitchen. That's not true. You need quality people, people who have an understanding of your responsibilities, people who have a clear indication of what is necessary for you professionally to make money, you know, they have to know what it is. And I'm starting to believe that they're just not out there. You know, I have been working with this group of restaurants where what I've noticed is the ownership of these restaurants keep saying, like, we're just going to put hands in there. We're just going to put bodies in there. And it's starting to show. They're not being able to produce the food properly they're not able to keep up with the demand of the guest and the owners are starting to wonder why like what happened what's going on back there and it's clear that the quality of labor that they have in their kitchen is not up to par the quality they have in the kitchen is not willing, and they want top dollar. What's going to happen? It's a good question. What is going to happen? You know, will restaurants have to lower the quality of food? Will they have to lower their presentation standards? Will they have to lower their prices? Because people are not going to be willing to pay for substandard food. Not to mention food going through the roof as far as prices are concerned. You know, where do you find, where is, where is that fine line of making money? When you have to pay your staff top dollar, when you have to pay for top dollar product, and it's not getting produced to the expectation of the guest for the money they're giving you for what they're buying, for what they're ordering. So this takes us to a very tricky situation. Now, Florida and Orlando in particular, in Puerto Rico too, we, I mean, there's tons of restaurants that require good cooks. This is our tourist areas where tourists come from all over the world and they expect certain quality from the places they go and dine. And I'm starting to think that maybe you're not going to find it. Now, a, a chef like me who's, you know, I'd have to say I'm just totally dedicated to putting out beautiful food. I'm totally dedicated to, you know, giving the guest, you know, the ultimate amount of, you know, product the ultimate product on their plates and you know uh, know, i'm not saying that i'm like wonder chef but i certainly believe that and work hard for that and here's my question like are our chefs gonna have to like really get back and start cooking almost everything because i mean in restaurant tours are they gonna have to hire that expensive chef to put out the food And will that expensive chef be willing to get on the line and deep fry stuff and literally plate and sauce things and go back to what that expensive chef was doing 30 years ago, 20 years ago? It's a tricky situation we find ourselves in. And ultimately, the question is, what's next? You know, what is next? You know, I see fast food restaurants 
even fast food restaurants going through the same troubles. And the restaurants that sell themselves as sort of, uh, you know, like hip restaurants and or gastro pubs and or gastro driven kitchen or chef driven restaurants. You know, we've been seeing it for a while now, you know, where, where, you know, and I guess the pandemic did it, you know, where some of the top restaurants that were pre pandemic post pandemic are no longer the top restaurants. What happened? The chef's kind of tired maybe, or the owners are kind of tired or has money, you know, has the restaurant become, has, has their footprint become so big that it requires every dime made. The margins have shrunk, yes. Employees expect more, yes. Food is more expensive, yes. What will be next? What is going to happen? It's a good question, you know? I mean, really, will will the New Yorks and the Chicagos and San Francisco's and Will the big cities be the only ones attracting the top chefs? You know, will they be the ones getting all the young cooks that want to learn to cook, you know, to be excellent? Will they be leaving their small towns to go to those big cities once again in the world? Are we kind of like regressing back to that where, you know, you're not going to be able to have good quality employees in the kitchen because they all left to New York or they all left to San Francisco to, to work. Is that the future? Will Orlando kind of be forced to be the turkey leg capital of the world? <laughs> you know, will will it be all about just kind of mac and cheese? Because you, you've seen it for some time now where, where restaurants have simplified their offerings because, not because of the quality, but because of the expectation of the guest. The guest kind of like wants simple things. Is that a blessing in disguise? Is the fact that the guest wants simple things like a great hot dog going to save your, you know, is going to save your restaurant? Because they don't expect you to be able to do a great pomzana and, uh, you know, a great uh, uh, fileto de manzo, you know. (laughs) Who knows? The future is uh, interesting, what we see in kitchens these days. And I can tell you from experience and my going into different restaurants to help restaurateurs and chefs kind of see the light, you know, of what it takes to be successful right now. And honestly, I'd have to say that the biggest problem right now that we see in restaurants are lack of staff and la- lack of quality in the kitchen. You know, I'm not trying to dog kitchens, and I'm not certainly trying to, to say that all the restaurants that I work with currently aren't trying because they really are. And the fact that I'm involved with them right now, you know, as a consultant, means that they're truly trying, that they're willing to fork out some money for me to go in there and troubleshoot with them really says a lot about the restaurateurs. It says that they're willing to look for angles for them to be successful, for them to be able to provide their guests exciting dishes still. But what I'm seeing is it's just not the same in the kitchen. The excitement that the restaurateurs have for their guests is not the same as what the employees willing to put out and uh, i'm just seeing it all over the place now unless you're paying your cooks and i hate to say this like and i'm saying this just honestly a cook thousand dollars a week they're not going to be willing to produce i mean and i get it trust me it's not like i'm i don't live in the world i mean Everything's so expensive, you know, everything, everything, rents and food. And if you have a family, you've got to provide for them. And this is like any other profession, you know, you're out there to provide for your family. And the question really is, is the culinary profession getting sort of snuffed out? 
Is it going to be limited to just feeding people? Is the restaurant in a small town doomed to just be simple? Are the fast food restaurants pushing out the chefs? Is that model is what's taking is is what's taking over the guest expectation? There's a lot to 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 kind of be observant in the next couple of years to see which way this goes. The pandemic has been sort of a grim reality. And sometimes when we have horrific weather events like Maria, like Ian, like, you know, we go down the line, you know. Will these events further make it difficult for us to survive? Will it take the guest expectation, just knock it down a little bit? Kick it down a notch. We have yet to see. And, you know, ultimately, will your taco be as good in the future? Will your burritos and your fine dining adventures be the same? And, you know, there's a lot of great restaurants out there. And, you know, you go on your on your Instagram and you see exciting dishes and you see exciting restaurants and big restaurant tours growing their restaurant empires. But are the offerings the same? Is it more gimmicky? Are these restaurants that claim to be fine dining establishments really just kind of pull the wool over your eyes with a little bit of dry ice and some funky colored foods? You know, I'm not hating because I love it all, you know. I love the good, the bad, and the ugly in the restaurant business. Always have. And I've been cooking forever at this point. And forever is a long time. But that's what I'm seeing. Has Instagram really kind of stolen the dining experience? Has Instagram and food influencers taken the the sort of bang out of you sitting at a restaurant and tasting food because somebody else did it for you and they wowed you with their Instagram post? It's a good question. And it needs to be answered. But I believe that if you are a person who believes that good food is worth saving, then you need to go out and dine more often and expect good food and or get in the kitchen. Because kitchens need good people. So, that's what I have for you today. This has been another exciting, although grim, <laughs> episode of Survival of the Fittest is the Soup du Jour. I'm Chef Roberto Trevino, and I'll be cooking for you and looking for the best for all of you to continue to dine out. We'll see you soon, folks. Take care. <laughs> <laughs>